I think for all of those who are blessed to have a river within uh, their area, the river be becomes really part of your cultural resources within the area. My name is Steve Cannell. I'm the general manager of Oakdale Irrigation District and I've been there 13 years. Well, Oakdale Irrigation District uh, provides irrigation water to farmlands. We provide about $150 million worth of agricultural crops each and every year from our service area. And the community really is dominated by two things. One is tourism and one is agriculture. The farmland that you'll find in Oakdale, about 30,000 acres of that is irrigated pasture, providing feeding for beef cattle. 20,000 acres are walnuts, uh, cherries, almonds, deciduous crops, uh, and about 10,000 acres are grain, feed crops for cattle. The Stanislaus River is the dominant water body that flows through our area, actually produces about a million acre feet a year. And of that water, uh, 600,000 acre feet is made available to South San Joaquin Irrigation District and Oakdale Irrigation District for irrigation purposes. Oakdale Irrigation District and South San Joaquin Irrigation District view the river as an asset. Uh, obviously it's an asset to us because we take water out, irrigate crops, uh, bring those crops to markets. The river just adds a lot of value to our community, both to the agricultural side and to the community itself. I think we all have to recognize that all of these things, water, uh, the resources they provide, the fish, uh, the farming, we all need to live together in a healthy manner. And you cannot use river assets and then not work to protect those river assets uh, you know, that you're working from. Fishbio was trying to acquire a grant for some you know, riparian improvements within the river. And so we focused all our money at that time into the Honolulu Bar project. Honolulu Bar is on the Stanislaus River in California's Central Valley. It's a popular recreation area that's located between the towns of Knights Ferry and Oakdale. We're concerned about the abundance of Chinook salmon and steelhead and the factors uh, that are mostly human caused that are affecting uh, the numbers of these fish. Fall run Chinook salmon is listed as a species of concern by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and the steelhead trout has been listed as a threatened species under the Endangered Species Act. We are concerned about these fish because they're in relatively low numbers compared to what they historically were on the river. So we're trying to increase the number of both Chinook and steelhead. We knew that habitat was a factor that was influencing the number of fish uh, produced in this river from two decades of monitoring conducted by the Oakdale and South San Joaquin Irrigation Districts. Since the beginning in 1990, we started investing in studies on the river. And when you take water from a river, you have the stewardship responsibility of making sure that that river stays healthy for the activities that are supporting your business. You cannot make valid decisions without good information. And so that's why we invest in the river as we spend a significant amount of money on fisheries, almost three quarters of a million dollars a year. We spend budgeting uh, on fishery assets in our river in, in knowledge and in, in biology studies, uh, fish counting, all those things we do each and every year because we value this resource so heavily. The monitoring that's conducted has included a weir where we're able to count the number of adult fish uh, returning from the ocean to the spawning grounds, and then rotary screw traps that are set up to count the number of babies produced from those adult fish as they migrate out to sea. And we actually count and take pictures of every fish that move up the river. That technology was not available until we brought it into this river uh, for that very purpose. We can't guess anymore on the science of the rivers. We have to go with hard data. And counting is one of those hard data things that are very important. And what that monitoring has shown is that even in years that we have a lot of adults coming into the river and spawning, there seems to be a bottleneck where we don't necessarily have an increase in the amount of juveniles that are going out each year. This showed us that there probably wasn't enough rearing habitat in the river for the young fish. Lack of space limits the number of fish that can successfully reproduce in that the fish are spawning right on top of each other. So as one fish comes in and spawns where another fish has already spawned, the eggs that were deposited previously are disturbed and lost. So essentially there's just not enough room for each fish to spawn in a different space. 
the overall goal of the Honolulu Bar Project was to increase the amount of shallow water habitat with uh, slow moving water for the young fish rearing in the Stanislaus River and also at the same time to increase the amount of spawning habitat available to adult salmon and steelhead. There were a lot of challenges associated with this site before restoration. The vegetation that was out here before was almost all Himalayan blackberry. It's a non-native invasive plant that grows everywhere. The plant community was not beneficial to the normal ecosystem in the area. It was difficult to walk out here, so even if there was water on the site, it wouldn't create habitat for fish. We need to, needed to open that up. And so we were able to come in and remove these non-native species that are of less value and promote uh, the growth of native species by um, planting in the project area. The revegetation is to plant these trees close enough so that they grow dense enough that we'll be able to outcompete the blackberry as it grows back. We have cottonwoods here, and this is a, some willow plants, as well as box elders and other species that were, were planted out here. The plants and the trees are important for shading. You'll have the insects that are associated with these plants and with these trees will at some point fall into the water and become fish food. One type of shallow water habitat that's beneficial to young salmon is floodplain habitat. And that's something that's in very short supply in the Stanislaus River. A Honolulu Bar was an island that even under high flows didn't get water on it. So there, there was no rearing or floodplain habitat in this area. So to increase the amount of floodplain habitat at Honolulu Bar, we brought in tractors and actually dug down the stream bank uh, to decrease the elevation so that uh, water would flow over it even under low flows. The problem with spawning habitat at Honolulu Bar was that we simply didn't have enough of it. Um, and the little patches that we did have was material that was too large for the fish to use effectively for spawning. So we took the material that had been dug out um, to create the floodplain and processed that and selected gravel of the right size to place in stream for salmon and steelhead spawning. This area was all dug out. Um, this area is the, straight across from us where there, there was some existing trees. So we wanted to leave those, those mature trees there to provide some shading. There was also a side channel that at low flows would become disconnected from the main river channel. In the fall when flows came up, the salmon would, would like to get in the side channel because it had good flow, but as soon as flows went down to the normal wintertime flow, they would lose this water. So we had adult salmon that were trying to spawn without water. So one of the goals of the project was to eliminate that stranding risk and also make the side channel more usable over a broad range of flows, in particular under lower flow conditions. Well, following construction at Honolulu Bar, we came in and conducted uh, surveys to determine if uh, young fish were using the area. In order to do that, we need to be out on the site counting the fish. To date, we have seen that fish are using this area and it is successful. We've seen large numbers of adults spawning in this general area. We've also seen juvenile fish using it um, throughout the winter and spring periods. To me what makes Honolulu Bar unique is the fact that we've taken all the knowledge that we know about salmon in creating the things that they like and need from nesting to hatching to uh, rearing, taking all that science that we know and putting it in a two and a half acre site specifically designated for them. It's like the perfect Disneyland. You know, everybody loves Disneyland, and Disneyland was built to satisfy people's needs. As science becomes more technologically advanced with electronics, I think we're able to do more, find out more, record more, sense more uh, than we have in the past. And I think that's leading to a good knowledge base to make wise decisions on the river.
There's great potential to improve uh, salmon and steelhead uh, numbers in the Central Valley by uh, additional improvements in habitat. So what I'd really like to see is more projects like Honolulu Bar completed to help us reach that goal. There's just one part of the river that we can work on and improve. And there are many other parts of the river that we can do exactly the same thing. And I don't think anybody can discount that Honolulu Bar provided value to the fisheries that are now using that. We need to find those gems and we need to continue to make those gems in the river uh, as we find them available and, uh, and take the opportunity to do so. Living on the river, having the river flow through your system uh, puts another responsibility of making sure that that river and that asset it remains healthy for the next generation beyond us. Uh, we're a family farming generation, so we keep passing things on. The river is no different. We want to pass on a healthy river system, one that's viable, that meets all the needs of the community as a community asset. And so being involved in the river, maintaining the river, being involved in its long-term productivity is very important to us.